are, as we give, we're helping them, Father God, spread the gospel to places that we would never get to. And Lord, we thank you for it, and we praise you for it, in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 the offering. While they're receiving it, you know, how many know Ed Elliott? Been here a couple of times. Ed graduated with me and my wife. He was a missionary to Africa, and he was there for 12 years. And he tells stories about swimming with piranhas and yep. all kinds of crazy stuff. I mean, I said, God told you to go there, not me. You got to know where you got to be, I'm telling you. But now he travels. Now, actually, now he goes, he's in Vietnam. This guy just loves being on the edge. He's in Vietnam, and he, he, he sends you a text in code. Met with the corporation headquarters today. That's church. That means church, because they, they're afraid. They don't want to, like, just say, so they use all this, this code stuff. But that's some of the work they're doing, man. He's over there. Can you imagine that? He went to places in Africa where a whole village got saved just because he went swimming with piranhas and didn't know they were there and they didn't bother him. <laughs> they said they were, every day for a week he would get up and he'd go into this stream and come out and the natives were actually watching him. So now it was time to go to the village. And he went to the village and he preached about Jesus. The whole village got saved. He said, well, that was the easiest thing I ever did. And they, the guy told him, he says, the reason they got saved, they thought you were a god. Because you went swimming in that thing that was infested with piranhas. And never were touched. Praise the Lord. Anyway, how many of you have your Bibles today? Amen. All right. Praise the Lord. We're going to turn to, uh, actually, you know, I've had something on my heart. If you're looking for a title, <coughs> it's called Forbearance and Forgiveness. And this has been on my heart for a while. And Pastor Eddie, and we all talk about faith. We love to talk about faith. Faith is, faith is so important to us. But there are things that cause our faith not to activate. We're making all the right moves. We're making all the right confessions. But there's something missing in that. Okay, and we could be expecting, and then we go, but it doesn't come to pass. Uh -huh. And so, as I look at Colossians chapter three, uh, for the first, from verse one to verse seventeen, from verse one to verse uh, eleven, it talks about not being carnal. Okay, then from verse twelve to seventeen, it talks about the character of the new man. So what we have here in verse 1, it says, If you then be risen with Christ, seek those things which are above, where Christ is sitting at the right hand of God. Set your mind. Everybody say mind. mind. That's your affections. You know, we all are. We're affectionate. We, we, we have affection for certain things in our life, whether it's our grandchildren or whatever it is. There's an affection. But he's saying, set your affections on things that are above. Not on things that are on the earth. Mm -hmm. And just to be perfectly honest with you, there's so much stuff on the earth that get our affection. Right. And it really caught, and then we start talking about faith and we wonder, dear Lord, this, my faith just isn't, what's going on here? Mm -hmm. Okay? And you come down here, it says, for you died and your life is hidden with Christ in God. Where, where when Christ who is in our life appears, we will appear with him in glory. And then it says, it says something interesting in here. And it just hit me while I was sitting down here. Verse 5 says, therefore put to death your members. Putting to death your members. And it talks about what we're supposed to put to death there. Okay, it says to put to death on the earth, fornication, uncleanliness, passion, evil desire, covetousness, which is idolatry. Okay, so he's saying put that to death. Well, what's the death thing we're talking about there? Consider it. Dead. It is dead. It's no longer alive because you are alive with Christ. So set your affections on things that are above. Amen. Then it comes down to the verse uh, verse 8. But now you, you yourselves are to put off. So now he's saying put to death and then he's saying put off. 
Because there are some things in life that you can contend with every day that you have to make a conscious effort to put off. Anger, unforgiveness, not telling the whole truth, nothing but the truth that'll help you, God. We call it evangelistically speaking or stretching the truth. Okay? <laughs> Amen. You know, and we do it. So it says, put off anger, wrath, malice, blasphemy, filthy language out of your mouth. Do not lie to one another. And then put on the new man. So there's a new man. What is the new man? The new man is our spirit that's been indwelt by the Holy Ghost. The Bible says, work out your salvation with fear and trembling. So we, we have to I literally put it on. We have to put off that other stuff because you're going to have opportunity every day of your life to walk in anger, to walk in malice. Blaspheme. Blaspheme simply means talking about people. Okay? Uh -huh. Take that in the King James way and just put it in regular language. Talking about people. Amen. Nitpicking people. Right. Okay? And so he's and then he says, put on the new man. The new man, which is renewed in the knowledge according to the image of him who created him, where there is neither Greek, Jew, circumcised, or uncircumcised. Then we get to verse 12. This is just a little introduction, okay? Therefore, as the elect of God, how many are the elect of God? You're called out. God has called you out. You're saved. Go with the Holy Ghost. All right. You're holy. You're beloved. It says, put on tender mercies, kindness, humility, meekness, long suffering. You know, those words, uh, let's just take the first one there where it says, uh, put on tender mercies. The, actually, the word tender there is the word where we get spleen from, our spleen. So what he's talking about, we need to become, once you start doing the verses in, in the first part of chapter 3, then you, you start to get a pure heart. You start to have mercy. You look at people in a different aspect. Love. Okay? And then he goes, uh, Tender mercy, and we get the word spleen from that. Mercy is compassion. To look on people with compassion, not contempt. You say, "What's all this? Have, this all has to do with your faith being activated?" Because God's given us a wonderful plan here on how to get along with everybody. Amen. But your flesh don't want to do it. See, you might have the fornication and uncleanliness and passion, evil the passions under control because they're put to death death but we still got the anger and the malice and everything else and he says that you need to put off Amen. hello Amen. thank you for the enthusiasm <laughs> and then it talks about kindness that's goodness gentleness humility modesty it's being modest uh, meekness long suffering patient and so how many of you would agree with me this morning? We're going to get, oh, in the next verse, I'm sorry, verse 13, and this is the verse that I want to talk about this morning. Bearing with one another, forgiving one another. If anyone has a complaint against another, even as, as Christ has forgave you, so you also must do. No option there, is there? No. You must do. Do it. Amen. Must. Now if you feel like it, be real honest with you. God don't really care what we feel like. He just wants us to do the work because what, when you do the work, you feel good. Amen. All right. So and all of us have the opportunities to get upset with people. All of us do. If you say you don't, Pastor Eddie's going to lay hands on you suddenly. Okay. But, but it, for something people said or did, and sometimes it's perceived. We just think they did. And, and if we let down our guard and we start indulging in this type of stuff, we live in a continual state of frustration in our lives. We live in a continual state of strife. And when we're in frustration and we're in strife, you can't believe God. You can go through the motions, but your faith has been deactivated. You know, 
uh, up on the boardwalk when we, we have a thing called schedule flight. And it has <laughs> activated workers and deactivated workers. And it's just the press of a button. Boom, and they're deactivated. That means they don't get put on the schedule no more, they don't get no more paycheck, they don't get no more nothing. Mm. And all I have to do is press this button. And it acts, activates them and they get put on a schedule. And it's that easy for us to deactivate our faith and activate our faith. Right. Hello? Yeah. All right. So, and, and so we can't let our, our, you know, our spiritual lives will suffer so much. And it can be difficult to convince our minds, our soul, to overlook a perceived wrong done to us. And then on top of that, to make things even more complicated, God says to forgive them. Just what you want to do. But the, there's a plan here. Three words. Bear, forgive, and complain. Those three things will help us out. If you have someone has a complaint against somebody. All right? And, and, and your, your flesh doesn't want to do it. It's at war with your spirit. Okay? So it's time for you to step up to the plate. And you know what? You know what? I don't like to hear when people say, well, you just don't know. Oh, yes, I do know. Okay? Because I'm a human. Just like you are. Okay? And so the Bible gives us this plan that can be used to promote peace in our relations. We have to learn how to extend grace. And we need to realize this, that humans act like humans, and people are people. I was at a board meeting the other day for a church, and we were talking about people. And I looked at the pastor and I said, ministry would be absolutely the greatest thing in the world. If it wasn't for people. <laughs> but so we have to learn how to extend grace to people. Because I'll be honest with you, sometimes you just like to get hit somebody in the head with a microphone. Like, <laughs> <laughs> and, and a good definition of grace is this it would be like a friendly disposition. Everybody say friendly. friendly. Where kindly acts begin, graciousness abounds, and loving kindness and goodwill are. Real simple. I'm going to condense that into a verse. Prefer your brethren above yourself. Amen. Then it goes down here and it says in verse, it says, uh, it says, and let the peace of God in verse 15 of what we were just looking at. And let the peace of God rule your hearts. But above, I'm sorry, verse 14, but above all these things, put on love, which is the bond of perfection. Yes. Love is perfection, okay? But anyway, in Colossians, verse 13, chapter 3, it says, bearing or forbearing, in King James Version says, bearing with one another and forgiving one another. If anyone has a complaint against another, even as Christ forgave you, so you must do. You must also do. And again, it's a very specific outline here, all right, how we're to respond to people in our lives that disappoint us and upset us. Because you're going to get people that disappoint you, and you're going to get people that upset you every day of your life, all right? And life is filled with disappointments. There's nothing you can do about it. And it's important for us to understand exactly what Paul is talking about in these, this verse of Scripture. Number one, Paul begins with the phrase, <coughs> bear one another. The word bearing comes from a Greek word. You know what it means? Tolerate. Tolerate. It means to tolerate, endure, to put up with one another. Oh, tolerance. To have tolerance with people. Sometimes you just need to put up with people. It's the exact opposite of being intolerant. It's the exact opposite opposite of being short-tempered. It's the opposite of speaking your mind to other people because you think they're wrong. Yeah. 
frustrated with family, our friends, our co-workers, people in church. I know. Because we deal with that. And acquaintances. And maybe it's sim a, it could be something so simple. But when you take it, it, it's so simple, but you let it fester and it becomes a big deal. Okay? Like maybe you just, we just don't like the way they think. Maybe we think, I would never do that. Why do they do that? Um, um, that's not the truth? Okay. And so I don't do that. Why should they do that? And you feel the need to go tell them. And they're done that. All right. In those moments, and we all have those moments, trust me, the most Christ-like attitude that you can demonstrate is to simply show self-control and let it go. Amen. That's what we call taking the high road. Amen. Amen. You know, it doesn't mean you have to compromise or ignore the ob obvious problem. Really, what we need to do, and I talked to my wife about this, yeah, we, when we, we encounter that, we don't encounter it, I'm not so much at church, but wherever we're at, uh, you know, with people that we know, or, or, or people down in Florida that live in our condo, you know, most of them aren't saved. And, you, you know, you're the saved one, so you'd like to tell them, hey, dummy. You know, you, God loves you, but you're doing something stupid. But yeah. shut up. They can be loud, boisterous, rude. Yeah. And you see them being rude with other people, and you really want to go in there and straighten it out. And you got to sit back. <coughs> because your flesh is going. You know the truth. <laughs> Mind your business. So what we need to do is we need to pray about those things. Pray that an opportunity to, would present itself to minister to that person. I said minister. Not speak your mind. And tell them off or what you think about the situation. That's what I'm talking about ministering to them. And now you know how many times that's happened in our lives. Opportunities would just come along where we're just able to minister to them and never really get into the situation that we knew was the problem but still the ministering part helped them in that situation because we're right away we're looking to get in there man <laughs> but again sometimes it means just taking a higher road shutting your mouth letting go of the offense or disappointment, and don't rehearse it with other people. Remember we talk about blaspheming? Don't rehearse it with other people. Don't go tell other people what's bothering you. Because what that does is you, it makes them look at that person in a different light. That's why Paul said in the verse that sometimes forbearing or putting up with people you interact with is the highest road you can take in life. You know, there were several years ago, there was a situation with people, and uh, I mean, they just blasted it on Facebook. And I'm thinking, how dopey. First of all, I don't want nobody to know what's happening in my You yeah. think I'm going to put it on Facebook? Yeah. Oh, I got up, I'm having scrambled eggs. <laughs> oh, my wife, we had a little tiff this morning. <laughs> Would you have somebody just tell, do something for me? Unfriend me. Because I don't really care that your kid, you're changing your kid's diaper. <laughs> Sorry, you know, a lot of you know how I feel about Facebook, okay? For a lot. Amen. For the same reason. But it's just like, it's great. We like to do all the church stuff, advertise that stuff, let you know what's going on. Great. But I don't need to know what you're doing. No. <laughs> I don't care. Really, I love you, but I don't care. Your green kid is giving you a hard time. Smack them. And don't put that on Facebook. 
There's a dying fizzle bee at your front door. <laughs> it, just, it just blows me away. Anyway. So when you start to get offended, when your flesh gets offended and you find yourself wanting to nitpick someone about what you perceive to be their failures, Luke chapter 6 tells you don't look at the speck and look at the log in your eye before you look at the speck in your brother's eye. Nobody calls you to be the, the fruit inspector. No one. Well, when you find yourself that, because we do find ourselves that way, all of us, Including myself, including even my wife. Gracious as she is. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> she, she, it, when you find that out, when you see that, the best thing you can do is to simply get quiet before God. Amen. Praise the Lord. And let God deal with you. <laughs> and like I said, there might be an opportunity to present itself. There may never come an opportunity to present itself. But your job is to forgive them the same way Christ forgave you. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Father. Although sometimes a loving confrontation might be part of it, but that's not always the course to take. That's why you need to step back and, and, and sit before the Lord and see what he wants you to do. Amen. About. You follow what I'm talking Again, we're still, we just, I didn't digress from faith. Because this is why people's faith don't work. Amen. Then he said, and he went on, Paul, and he said, <clears throat> forgiving one another. The word forgive comes from the same Greek word as grace, charis. Okay? And the word forgiving <laughs> simply means forgiving someone wholeheartedly. Freely, readily forgiving them. We see that with Stephen when he was getting stoned. He readily forgave all those people, including Paul the Apostle, who was standing there holding the coats. He said, God, forgive them. And it's the only place in the Bible where he said he looked up to heaven and saw Jesus standing. Jesus is seated at the right hand of the Father. Yes, amen. Because Stephen walked in the highest form that there was. And so, you know, even over in Mark chapter 11, verse 25, we don't have to turn there or go there. But you know, it's, it's, it's a have faith in God or have the God kind of faith. That whoever speaks his mouth can move and open the whole thing. But, you know, that's great. We hammer that. Man, I got a hundred sermons on Mark chapter 11, verse 23. But it says, the next verse, in order for have that to work, you need to do the next verse, which says, forgive. Amen. Forgive. Mm -hmm. So you can talk a big tune, but if you're walking around with unforgiveness, you got a problem. You have a major problem. And I will I can't give you statistics, but I'll bet you if you go to counseling and you find out why things are not happening for people and you get to the bottom of it, there is unforgiveness somewhere. Amen. So it goes beyond just forbearing that neck that forgiveness. It's the next level. You tolerate them and you forgive them. And how many times has God extended his grace to us? Seriously, how many times? By freely forget, I mean, he for, you know, God is so good. He, he forgave us all our sins, past, present, and future. That means time, every time you go out and you mess up, he's already, he's freely forgiven you. And given you grace to go with it. Who are we? Not to forgive other people. That's right. Amen. Amen. Yeah. And we're being instructed by the Holy Spirit through Paul to extend forgiveness to those people who have wronged us or offended us. Amen. That's 
Next word I want to look at is the word complaint. You know. He related, it's the core of this whole message. He said, if anyone has a complaint against you, even as Christ forgave you, so you must do also. And the word complaint is a simple word. It means to have a quarrel or a grievance against someone. And it's usually, and this is what I like when I started saying, depicts a complaint that is backed with solid evidence. See, sometimes there's a perceived, you think somebody's doing, but sometimes you've got evidence. <laughs> And now you've become the prosecutor. <laughs> but he says, forgive. That's right. Forgive. As Christ, we're to forgive and God forgave. You understand what I'm saying? Perhaps somebody failed you. What, you they did something unexpectedly. They did something to you. Acted below the expectations you had for them. But regardless of what you perceive this person has done, wrong or not, or what complaint or quarrel or grievance, and the solid evidence you have with them, the Bible tells us, it commands us, it doesn't tell us, it commands us to forgive them. Amen. You don't have an option. This is not A, B, C, D. <laughs> It's you need to forgive them. And I'll just say this before you go another step further in your walk with God and how spiritually you might think you are. If you don't forgive them, you're marking time and you're going nowhere. Right. <clears throat> now, you might not like that and it might not be one of my funniest sermons, but it's the truth. Yes, it is. And, it, and I've been thinking about this for weeks. Weeks, I kept it right. I kept, weeks I've been thinking about this. Yeah. Why can't people just walk in love towards one another? Why don't people have to be mean yeah. and tell you what they think? Yeah. Nobody's going to get over on me. Mm -hmm. I'll just let them know right up front. <laughs> Who cares? Good for you. Now you just let the whole world know you're an idiot. <laughs> you follow what I'm saying? <coughs> it's not right. I had that happen to me one time. I was sitting in a meeting and had to have a stern talk with someone in love. That didn't go good. But I took the high road. They threw something at me. And I said, when you eat, go have the side door. I said, why? Don't go walking through these buildings. Just go out the side door. What I wanted to do was take that person. Anybody been to the office upstairs? Those steps go up, up. I wanted to get on the top. I didn't want to push them down the steps. I just wanted to throw them over the top. Because they would have got down fast. But no, I took the high road. And therefore, I'm free, man. Amen. Praise the Lord. They can say, they can, people can say whatever they want about me. I'm not, I refuse. That's right. To get in strife over it. Amen. Praise God. So, as Christ has forgave gave you, you must also do. Well. When I read that, it, there's no options there. No. I, I, no matter what. Well, maybe this one doesn't deserve my full forgiveness. <laughs> <laughs> you know how our Father, that our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, forgive us our debts as we forgive those who love us. Yes, and a lot of people say, oh, I've forgiven them. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh uh, Henry Kissinger. No, no, no that, that was... That was Nixon. Anyway, uh, I've forgiven them. Then they see him walking down the street. And they open up this little cage in their heart. They pull them out. They set them on a perch. And they punch them. Then they put them back in their heart and go, I forgive them. 
Forgive and forget. Amen. Amen. So, with that, we've been forgiven. Now we have a responsibility to do the same. Walk in forgiveness. He continues to forgive us past, present, and future. We need to forgive past, present, and future. It says, be Christ-like. Well, if you're going to be Christ-like, you're going to forgive past, present, and future. And the flesh don't want to do that. So it says, take off the old and put on the new. Take off anger, malice. Take that off and put on the character of the new man, which is love and forgiveness and tolerance and walk in that. And it's not something you do once. It's not something you do every day. It's something you can end up doing every half hour. Serious. It's a conscious walk every day to like when something happens, you've got a split second to make up your mind. I'll give you an example. You know you're going down the street, somebody cuts you off. You got a split second to make up your mind. You or bless him, Lord. You got one split second to do that. And on Route 37, that can happen six times in six seconds. And if you're in Hallandale, Florida, bro, you're just walking. That's just the way it is. But you do, you have that, you know, you can get angry, real angry, real quick, or you can bless them, Lord. Take the high road. Forget the road rage. Right? I figured you'd equate to that one. I'll tell you, when you we're going to receive communion now. Okay? And when, you, when we remember how much we've been forgiven by Christ. And maybe other people have forgiven us for some stupid things we've done and taken us back in fellowship and opened their arms to us. Whether it was accidental or wrong. You realize you don't have a right to stay upset with anybody. You just don't. The only right you have, write this down, the only right you have is to love them and forgive them. That's your only. The rest of it is not a right. Okay, And by faith, you can bear people and you for, forgive them right now. You don't have, you, you, you know, it's not one of these things, let's go have a sit down and go through all that. You forgive them in your heart. Yeah. Amen. And when you see them, you're gracious to them. Yes. Amen. You don't ignore them. You don't go the other way. You're gracious in your feet. And they can be the biggest jerk back to you. And they can be a Christian. They can be a minister of the gospel. Has no bearing on what you're supposed to do. Amen. Walk in tolerance and forgive them. And be gracious to them. Even though they're not to you. I don't tell you, didn't say you had to go have dinner with them. I'm just saying, you don't have to. Sacrificing myself for you people right here. Right? <laughs> anyway. You go. But, Thank but, you. We, but we can do it. We can do it. As a matter of fact, it's so important that Paul mentions it twice. Forgive and forgave. 
Yeah. Two times God wants us to get the message, forgiveness. That's the, that's what. We're doing. And, and he even drove the point home when he said, even if you have solid evidence, doesn't matter. Don't matter. Forgive them. Amen. Can you say amen? Amen. Let's bow our heads, ushers. Why don't you come up here and have the communion elements? And while you're doing that, just think of people in your life that you perceive they did something to you.